So the first thing you're going to do is uh, get a little bit of soil and place it on a wash glass and you're going to add a few drops of universal indicator to it just so to moisten the soil. Then you're going to get some barium sulfate and you're going to sprinkle a little bit of the powder over the top of where you put the universal indicator and you're going to watch for a colour change. When that colour change happens, get your universal indicator colour chart to determine what pH level the soil is at. So in this experiment we do need to wear glasses because we are using silver nitrate which is quite toxic and we need to make sure that we don't get it onto our skin or clothing and that we wash our hands carefully afterwards. The first thing you're going to do is get a little spatula worth of soil and put it into the bottom of a test tube. Then you're going to add about half a test tube's worth of water and give it a really good shake to mix it all up. Then you'll get your filter funnel and your filter paper and fold your filter paper accordingly to be able to filter out the mixture. So the part here that we want to keep is the water that comes through that's been mixed with the soil but not the actual uh, soil particles. While that's filtering, uh, you're also going to grab some salt and put it in the bottom of the test tube. And this is just uh, as a control so we can see what actually happens when we add the silver, silver nitrate to the salt, what results will we actually end up with. And so we can compare that with the soil that we have. So we can compare whether we've got um, chlorides in our soil or not. So once you've got the salt and the water mixed up nicely, then you're going to get the silver nitrate and place a few drops in it. You can see immediately that it goes cloudy in the test tube. This indicates that there is the presence of chlorides. So then once you've got enough of your uh, soil and water mixture that's been filtered, you're going to do the same thing. Add a couple of drops in to see whether there are chlorides present in that soil. In this case, you can see that there is no color change. There is no white color, which means that there are no chlorides present in our soil sample. In this experiment, we're testing the amount of moisture content in soil. Now to do that, we need to use a crucible, but we need to make sure that we weigh the crucible first before we add the soil. Once you've weighed your crucible, you're going to start by getting two spatulafuls of soil and placing them inside a crucible. You then need to sort through that soil and pull out any sticks or bark in that so that you are just left with the soil. We want to test for organic matter that's actually been um, decomposed and has become part of the soil as opposed to you know, sticks and leaves that are just sitting in the soil but are not actually part of it yet. So that's why we need to separate those out. Once you've got your sample in your crucible, you're just going to label it so that we know whose is whose in the classroom because we are going to place these in an incubator overnight to dry out the soil and measure moisture content. So once you've got your soil in your crucible, you're going to weigh it and record that down in your notes. Here's one we prepared earlier that's been in the incubator overnight. You are going to record the mass again and that small change helps you to know how much moisture content there was in the soil sample that you had. So we're going to heat this one up now. So this is the uh, organic matter uh, content. So we've got goggles for this. Now we don't, we're not in the lab at the moment, but we light, light the Bunsen burner as normal. Put on the blue flame, and then we're going to put the uh, crucible carefully 
into the pipe clay triangle there and we're going to let that heat. Now it's going to heat for around about five to ten minutes and you'll notice that the uh, soil changes colour. It'll go a whitey colour and then it'll probably go really dark in colour as well. You may even see um, some bits of a glowing red. Um, smoke will come out. Um, when the smoke stops coming out, all the carbon has burnt up and you can then turn it off again. So we're going to uh, imagine that's now cooked and so um, we need to take it off. The important thing at this point though is um, with no more smoke coming out, that is still very, very hot and you've got to be careful not to burn yourself. So carefully with these tongs, you've got to pick it up. Now these are very hard to pick up and they're very rocky. So we'll put it down here slowly onto the heat proof mat in the lab and we'll just let that cool down for a bit longer. Once again, be extremely careful with this one because it can tip over very easily and if you tip it over, you'll have to start the whole thing again. Right, so now it's cooled down a bit more. I'm not going to take any chances. Carefully put it up here. And then you can see only a very small amount of organic matter, but still some organic matter.